I, you know, I, I think one, one need for them, you know, probably not here in the next few weeks pre-trade deadline, but in the off season is, is to find a, a true rim protector. I still want Nasri getting minutes, but I, I think they need another enforcer inside. Yeah. So my next, my next question actually was going to be, is there anyone, is there any names that you could see possibly being linked to the Timberwolves in the next coming weeks before the deadline? Well, I mean, we know that they had interest in, in Aaron Gordon, who's now hurt. Yeah. We know that they had interest in Larry Nance Jr., who's now hurt. We know that they had interest in in PJ Tucker. They chased free agents like Jamichael Green, uh, Derek Jones Jr. in Portland, Jay Crowder Ooh. in Phoenix. I don't think any of those guys are are being moved, but pretty quick here, those guys that signed as as free agents are eligible to to be traded. And PJ Tucker is a free agent. Like, would it just make some sense to wait until after the season, you know, and, and chase him in free agency? You know, whatever the Wolves cap situation looks like, if they have the full mid level, whatever it might be, would it make more sense to chase Tucker then as opposed to giving up an asset in a trade now? Like, how important are his bird rights? I, I don't know if they're they're that important. And that, but yeah. like a power forward, I mean, that would make the most sense. I mean. Does Ed Davis want to try and join a contender? Maybe. Like, are you getting anything for Ed Davis? I mean, maybe a, a future second round pick with all sorts of protection that eventually just goes away. Yeah. But for optics, if, if you want to announce that you acquired a future draft pick, you know, there might be a trade out there for, for Ed Davis, but maybe more realistic is you just buy out Ed Davis, right? And go let him join a contender, go back to Brooklyn or, or go somewhere, you know, sometime in, in March. I mean, otherwise I don't think there's, there's a whole lot out there. I don't think the league is knocking down the door for Jared Culver. I don't think the league is knocking down the door for Josh Okoge, but I think they need to be open-minded on, on a lot of different possibilities, you know, and clearly they, they have too many wings, like not all these guys can play. So when you look at Culver and Okoge, like if you can move one of them and you can get the right piece back, you probably should make the move. Which one would you rather have on the roster, Okoge or Culver? Who have you seen more from? Well, I mean, Okogie's shot is completely broken right now, but I still think he's their best perimeter defender. Mm -hmm. Probably best overall defender, frankly. Jarrett Culver? I would probably take Okogie because Flip Saunders, the late Flip Saunders, always told me, like, a guy needs to have a legit NBA skill. Josh Okogie has a legit NBA skill with his defense, even if he can't shoot. Yeah. I don't know what Jared Culver's legit NBA skill is. So the fact that I'm still struggling, it's a good question, Peyton, but the fact that I'm struggling to figure out what Jared Culver's NBA skill is, work ethic maybe. I mean, I think I think there's something to be said about just outworking guys. Yeah. That 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 playing hard is a skill, but a lot of people would argue that playing hard is not a skill. That's an expectation. But I, I do think for for some guys, playing hard is a legitimate skill. I think Jared Culver probably has that, but I think the more noticeable NBA skill is Okogie's defense. So I lean Okogie with, with your question. For sure. And just like, what, what kind of value do you think Culver could like, what do you think, um, what do you think we could get back for Culver even? Would do any other teams like see potential in him or. I mean, all it takes is one. So maybe, but I don't think you're getting back a lot. I mean, the question to ask would be this. Would you move Culver straight up for P.J. Tucker? Get P.J. in here to have some sort of influence, even if you're not making the playoffs this year. Yeah. Get him in here. Let him have some sort of influence on, on the locker room the rest of this season. You know, the popular buzzword in, in all the sports, not just here in Minnesota, is culture, right? So let him have an impact on, on the Wolves' culture the rest of the way. Maybe that's not a horrible idea. You know, then then you bring him in with with – with every intention to, to re-sign him after the season that you'd be having dialogue with his agent. Yeah. You'd have a, a decent idea of, of what it would take to, to sign him for the next couple of years. I mean, that to me would, would be the question because I would imagine Houston would probably do that if they anticipate losing Tucker after the season anyway, if they can get back anything. So why not get back a guy in a rookie contract, the former number six overall pick that maybe has a chance, Texas native, you know, but but a lot of people might say, why the heck would you give up Jared Culver? You know, you just moved up in the draft for him a year ago, two drafts ago. 
why would you do that for a pending free agent? A lot of people might say that's, that's idiotic. That's moronic, but like, that's probably the kind of deal that you'd be looking at. Because isn't the, I don't, I don't know. I'm just, cause obviously there was a lot of buzz the last time we talked about the PJ Tucker thing. And I was just wondering, was the deal too steep that they couldn't get it done back then? Or are they still inquiring just picks or something? Well, they had pick 17 on the table. I mean, they, you know, they were willing to do some things and Houston just said, no, I mean, Houston didn't trade them. Right. So, yeah. you know, Houston probably felt like when James Harden was there at the time that they try to run that thing back through and see where they went after 15 or 20 games, then reassess, you know, then, then things blew up with, with James, but at the time, you know, draft night, pre-draft, there were certainly whispers out there that Harden won it out. But at yeah. that point, my sense is Houston's intentions were we're not trading James Harden. So we want PJ Tucker here. PJ is going to help us with James. Like we can't move PJ Tucker pick 17, you know, now this draft looks like it's going to end up being a lot better than a lot of us thought, but at the time, maybe pick 17 wasn't, wasn't all that appealing, you know? So I think Houston just looked at it and said, PJ's too valuable to us. We still have, you know, some big time expectations this particular season with James, we need PJ here with James. So we're not taking pick 17 for PJ Tucker. Definitely. 